So welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. And in this um, video, I'm going to go through question number five from the January 2020 International A-Level LXL Pure Mathematics 1 paper. And in this question, part A is telling us to find using algebra all solutions of this equation. Uh, using algebra meaning not using uh, any graphical methods nor using your calculator to just use the equation function but they want to see a method of uh, algebraic method of solving it and in p1 we know how to solve such equations by factorizing now you might think oh we don't know how to do cubic equations well we do if there's a common factor of x in all the terms so what we do is we take out the common factor of x and in fact there's uh, another factor of 10 in each of the terms. In fact, what we can do first to make life easier for a equation, we can divide everything by 10, and that gets rid of um, you know these zeros, so it makes life a bit easier. So you have 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3 equals, or 3x, sorry, equals 0. Minus 3x equals 0. So that's just dividing both sides by 10 in an equation to make life easier. I can do this as it's an equation, okay? I can divide both sides by 10. If it was an expression and I was trying to factorize it, I wouldn't be able to do that because you can't. There are, you don't have two sides to divide by or to divide 10 by. So you have to keep the 10 out as a factor. But in this case, as it's an equation, we can divide both sides by 10 and it's absolutely fine. The solution for this will be the same as the solution for that. Okay, won't affect the solution at all. So we got 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x equals 0. Now I can take out the common factor, which is x, which leaves me with a quadratic inside the bracket. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. So I know that either x equals 0 or 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. So I could factorize this further and solve it. So factorizing something like this, there's different methods people use. You can use use commando method where you go straight ahead and do it, which is not too difficult really. Or you could use a method of splitting the middle term, which some people use. Or you could use this grid method, which I prefer. So I need, I know that um, I've got to find two numbers that multiply to give me the same as a product of those, which is minus 6x squared. And the sum of those two numbers has to be the same as the middle term which is minus 5x so you think of two terms that multiply to give you a negative so that has to be a positive and a negative term and when you multiply them you get six and you add them you get five it must be six and one it must be minus six x and plus x those multiply to give you minus six x squared and add to give you minus five x so the common factor from these two terms here is two x and the common factor from these two terms is x 2x times minus 3 gives me minus 6x, and x times plus 1 gives me x. So I know my factors here are 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. Um, so that's equal 0. So we know that either this bracket is 0, so either 2x plus 1 is 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. So we can say x equals minus a half, and x equals 3. So we have three solutions x equals zero x equals minus half and x equals three those are all three solutions of this equation now some people they might have been tempted to divide by 10x in the first step okay so you divided by 10 why didn't you divide by 10x that's x is also a factor of all terms well if you divide by x the problem is you lose a solution if we had divided by x we would have got this we wouldn't have had the x times this and therefore, we'd have lost the solution x equals 0. That is a solution of this um, quadra of this cubic equation. So you have to always make sure you don't divide by something you know, that you're supposed to take out as a factor. Don't divide by it. You can divide by a constant, no problem. But you can't divide by, say, the x here. Otherwise, you'll lose solutions. And that's a very important point, a place where people make mistakes. So you cannot divide by 10x. You can divide by 10. That's fine. But not 10x, because the x... Divided by the x will make you lose a solution. Now, part b says hence. Okay, whenever you see the word hence in a question, it doesn't even say hence or otherwise, it just says hence. That means you have to, you have to use what you've just found. So these words are not there for decoration. Okay, you don't just 
all right, find all the real solutions of this, and then you try to solve this, you know, going straight into it without even thinking about the first part of the question. The word hence is there to, to bring your attention to the fact that there is some link between the, this question up here and the question down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little snippet of this question. Okay, and I'm going to put it down there. Um, and we're going to see how it relates to this question by, put, by, by looking at them next to each other. So that's what you should be doing in the exam. When you have a question like this, just keep looking. Whenever you see the word hence, you look at the first part of the question, okay, the, the part of the question before the hence bit, say, okay, how can I link it to the previous part of the question? Now, if you look at this very carefully, you see you've got 20 times something, minus 50 times something, minus 30 times something, okay? And what you can see quite clearly is that this term, y plus 3, is the square of this term, because this is the square root of that, and this term is the cube of that term. Okay, so basically, if you say let x be y plus 3 to the power of a half, okay, then this is basically what you're going to get. You're going to get 20x cubed, you're going to have 30x, and then minus 50x squared. If you that means x squared, you see x squared is the same as the square of this, which is y plus 3, just y plus 3. Okay, I'll keep it in a bracket for now. y plus 3 to the power of 1. And x cubed is going to be basically y plus 3 to the power of a half raised to the power of 3, which is y plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2, because you multiply the powers. If I raise this to the power of 3, I have to multiply the powers. A half times 3 is 3 over 2. So you can see that very clearly, you know, x is related to y, to the, y plus 3 to the power of a half, then x squared would be y plus 3, then x cubed would be y plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2. So the solutions we found in part A are relevant for part B. So we know that x equals minus a half, and x equals um, 3, and x equals 0 x equals 0. So I can say, therefore, y plus 3 to the power of a half is equal to minus a half, and y plus 3 to the power of a half is equal to 3, and y plus 3 to the power of a half is equal to 0. So now I have to find all the real solutions of this. So let's go ahead. So first of all, let's look at the first one. y plus 3 to the power of a half equals minus a half. Now, when you have y plus 3 to the power of a half, what it means is the positive square root of y plus 3. What it means is this. It means the positive square root of y plus 3. Okay? So, the positive square root of y plus 3 equals minus a half. Well, there's no positive square root of something which is a negative answer. Okay? So, there is no solution to this. Okay, you can't say, oh, let's square both sides. This means the positive square root of y plus 3. That's what it means. Okay, from the beginning, it means that it was there in the question already. Okay, that means the positive square root of y plus 3. Now, positive square root of y plus 3 cannot be negative a half. Okay, so there's no solution to this part of the equation. Then you've got y plus 3 to the power of a half equals 3. Well, that makes sense because... The positive square root of something equals 3. That's fine. So we can square both sides. We get y plus 3 equals 9. So y is equal to 9 minus 3, which is 6. So there's one solution. And then we got y plus 3 to the power of a half equals 0. Well, that also makes sense because you can have the positive square root of 0 is 0. Okay, so that's fine. So y plus 3 is equal to 0 squared, which is 0. So y equals negative 3, and there we have our answer, our answers. Okay, so we end up with y equals 6 and y equals negative 3.